Hello everyone and welcome to a special Joy Clicks Predictions special. My name is Christian Buckley. I am here today. You know me from Joy Clicks. You might know me from Tech Raptor as well on the TikTok, on the Twitters. Joining me today to talk about the long-awaited, not E3, Nintendo Direct, we have some special guests, including... Oh, sorry. Hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Charlie Wackolds. You might remember me from the last time that there was a Nintendo Direct and I hopped on. Or maybe it was a time before last, but one of the recent Directs I hopped on, uh, Joy Clicks, and gave some of my predictions. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at chas underscore mke. Uh, or at Windows Central presently, I'm doing a bunch of coverage for all the video games that I saw and played at Summer Game Fest. Um, otherwise, yeah, just check me out on Twitter. That's the best spot to find all of the various and sundry things that I do and write about. Heck yeah. Do you have a favorite that you want to shout out to direct people towards in terms of uh, stuff you did play at SGF? Ooh, um... My biggest piece is going to probably be the Mortal Kombat preview. Heck yeah. Uh, and that's not out yet, I don't think. Mm -hmm. uh, I There have been some shenanigans with the back end of getting that stuff published. So, uh, But yeah, uh, definitely Mortal Kombat 1. That was a big deal. I'm, uh, I'm, just, I'm just excited to be writing about video games. <laughs> you know, the first half of the year was so dry, and now mm -hmm. things are happening all the time. Yeah, T too much, you know. Uh, <laughs> Also joining us, rounding out the panel, we have. Uh, it's me. Uh, I'm Omar Nakfi. Hello. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. I'm a hard worker. I'm flexible. I have an energetic and positive attitude. Uh, I have a great deal of experience. I am a team player. I am seeking to become an expert in my field, and I am highly motivated. It's great to be here. Wonderful to have you here, Omar, as always. Uh, Thank you. Ha have you. Have you watched... Avatar The Way of Water at home yet? No. They fucked up the HDR grade. Re oh, no. I think Cameron hates HDR. It's really depressing. That's... Did they also fuck up the HFR stuff? Uh, it's not even available on the on the home release, at least. Ugh. It's uh, apparently that will get released on the Apple Vision Pro oh as God. an exclusive. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, that's all we know. I can't believe I have to buy... A thirty-five hundred dollar headset to experience joy again. If Cameron That's wants you to do it, you have to. <laughs> well, we are here after what Charlie said. At least, uh, for game news wise, kind of a slow first half of the year. Game release wise has been pretty packed, but we uh, we are coming off the Summer Game Fest season. I genuinely thought it didn't end yet, but I was told today that the Nintendo Direct that's happening tomorrow morning, Wednesday, June 21st at 7 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Eastern is uh, not part of Summer Game Fest, despite the Game Awards Twitter account retweeting it, quote tweeting it, you know, so um, we're here after a, I'd say pretty solid not E3 season, and Nintendo is having the final word on this here SGF not E3 season. And I think the best place to start is probably what we know will be there. 40-minute show, Pikmin 4. Who on this panel is a fan of Pikmin? Do we got one? Damn. <laughs> I have never played a Pikmin game. I played like five minutes of the, the first one after I did a Twilight Princess earlier this year. I was like, I'm in a GameCube mood still. And I was like, no, I'm not. <laughs> I really wanted to play Pikmin because I thought that character's name was Omar, but then I found out it was Olimar, and then I lost interest. Well, Omar, what if I told you in Pikmin 4, you can be Omar? What? That's a character creator in this bad <laughs> No movie. one's ever told me that before. <laughs> uh, that sounds cool. Yeah. Um, are, are you guys going to dip your toes into this one? I might. I have a voucher. <laughs> yeah, me too. Ah. Uh, yeah. I, so uh, Amazon delayed my physical delivery of Tears of the Kingdom, so I was like, fuck it, I'm going to drop $100 instead of 70 and uh, get my get my <laughs> two games out of this. So yeah, That's fair. Uh, yeah, I do have a voucher. I'm, I'm kind of curious about Pikmin, because I like 3D platformers. I know that's not what Pikmin is, but with 4 specifically... 
the whole like tiny person in a real life real sized environment but it's all majestic because you're a tiny person in this world you know um that speaks to me uh, mm -hmm. because of the toy story 2 video game on the ps1 so uh that's interesting but uh yeah i'm not like fully committed one way or the other to this one but seems neat I'm kind of in the same spot where, like, I it, it's so funny because with Nintendo games, you never really have to worry about the sequel thing, where it's like, oh, I'm going to miss out on X, Y, or Z narrative thing. Yeah. Because unless it's like, Kirby. you know. Kirby's got deep lore. <laughs> that, everyone tells me that. I refuse to believe it. There's just no way. He's just a pink guy who eats who eats good. He is, but I, I played through a couple of the ones because they added, like, the Game Boys games this uh -huh. year, right? And that's like where Kirby started. So I played through uh, the first three and there's kind mm. of an underlying like lore, like in the background that's gets built up, but two on the game boy really, or no, the second game, which was the game boy game, uh, dreamland two really surprised me with, uh, mm. it's ending specifically, <laughs> but that's all <laughs> I'll say. Okay. Interesting. But, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I think, I think Pikmin is like, it has such a like an interesting weird spot compared to other Nintendo stuff, where it's like it came out as a new IP on this old uh, or on, the, on this console that was like beloved by a lot of people, but didn't really sell that well. Yeah. And Alomar is like not really the biggest presence in Smash, you know, which is really the only other place where like outside of Pikmin that Pikmin would show through. And I I, I think it's like. You have the Pikmin sickos, and they're going to buy this game and snap it right up and, like, really love it. And then there's going to be, like, this influx of newcomers to the series that I think are, are, are really going to, like, boost the popularity of this, of, of this franchise. Because you have so many Switches out there, right? Mm -hmm. So it kind of just makes sense to me that this is going to be a big deal. But, like, a lot of us aren't really going to be diving in unless we, you know, really, really get sold tomorrow. Yeah. Um, Omar, what do you need to see out of this game to be sold on it? Or I guess, is it a matter of like, depending on what they show for the fall lineup is going to decide if you get Pikmin or not? Uh, I suppose it really is. I'm looking to spend some, some money. It's one voucher on one game from Nintendo this year. Yeah. Ooh. And if there's anything else that looks better than Pikmin, Pikmin's out. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. <laughs> so uh, there were there were some like leaks of Pikmin earlier today. There's like a multiplayer thing and some other stuff. I I don't really feel like getting too much into that, especially seeming like we're the least educated people on the Pikmin franchise and kind of half out on this one already. So we can pivot to this. We don't really know anything that's coming the rest of this year for big titles from Nintendo. So. Ideally, Omar, what do you want to spend your second voucher on if it's not Pikmin? What do you want to see tomorrow, hope to see, that you'd be spending that voucher on this fall? Well, uh, probably Metroid Prime 4, I guess. Okay. Hmm. Is that real? <laughs> I hope it is. It's been, okay. it's been long enough, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that'd be cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Metroid Prime 4, man. It... I, I've I've been so out of the loop on like Nintendo related news lately, mm -hmm. and I spent kind of the day while I was at work like just catching up on podcasts and stuff. And it seems like there's a very like omnipresent expectation that Metroid Prime Four is going to show up at this thing. And I'm curious how you guys feel about that because I'm, I'm I'm still like fifty fifty on whether or not it shows up today or tomorrow. So. I, I think it depends on the the person, whoever you're asking. I think it depends on if they believe the uh, the prime remaster strategy, right? And, and like what the intent there was, because like if prime remaster dropping earlier this year was to like pepper in, okay, now we can get two and three dropped on the way to four. It's like yeah, it probably won't hit this year. But if prime remastered which is rumored to be the prime game that had the most work done to it, right? If two and three exist, it sounds like it's just like a, a simple up res. Um, 
Prime Remastered being introduced earlier this year, like very early back in February, as like a, hey, this is what Metroid Prime is. And Charlie, going back to what you were talking about with Pikmin, the whole... Eh, Nintendo sequels, you can kind of just hop in wherever, you know? It's yeah. like the vibe of Metroid Prime and the concept of Metroid Prime is what they introduced with that game. They weren't saying like, a, hey, this is time to get caught up. Here's two and three, right? Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm leaning towards probably seeing Metroid Prime 4. Um, I, I kind of assumed that was going to be the fall game this year, but I've kind of shifted to thinking that's going to be early next year and is a different mm-hmm. holiday game. Um, but... Yeah, I, I think it's due, right? Because I don't see a game on the level of a Prime 4 or a 2D Mario that we're still going to get on the Switch, like on that level of notoriety, before it's time to talk about like new hardware. Because um, I, I think Prime 4, despite its sales ceiling being lower than other things, like it's it's still like a big thing that Nintendo's going to want to push for how much time and effort went into this thing, I think. So. Yeah, I... Man, every time I hear someone talk about it, I flip-flop yeah. about Metroid Prime 4 being the big fall game. Because, yeah, I mean, uh, to address the elephant in the room, I'm sure you've both seen the kind of uh, rumor, leak, questionable Twitter user talking about a 2D Mario showing up tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And... I was not very inclined to believe this this account, um, and I'm still not sold on whether or not this source is like a reliable, consistent source because we see this all the time mm-hmm. in the like Nintendo rumor sphere. But if that's true, and if what they're saying is is like accurate, I'm definitely with you, Chris. Where I think I could see a 2D Mario hitting this year, or this fall, and then Prime Four kind of being the the like breath of the wild tears of the kingdom thing where it hits early next year and it's the like the tent pull release for that third or half of the year yeah so do you guys expect if we do see prime four we also see two and three or do you think it's just gonna be okay you tried one now just all focus on this next one i i think they'll port two and three over before four personally okay. mm-hmm. but I, again i'm not too familiar with metroid prime so maybe you, you guys are super right about that story stuff that doesn't really matter but they did do the trilogy once before That's i true. feel like they'd like to do it again yeah I, i'm <laughs> also not super familiar with metroid prime i just know that the sentiment seems to be that the story in one is like universally praised and then two and three it seems a bit more divisive and i know I want to say other M followed that up, and then people got real opinions on that one. But mm-hmm. um, like I, I went through the two D games, except for two, uh, leading up to Dread, and I loved doing that. But when I played Dread, it was very clear like a I did not need to play that stuff. Like some of the stuff that was implemented in with like uh, the weird floating alien balls that were in fusion <laughs> the x person yes i knew it was an x something but um that was like oh cool i dealt with that before but at the beginning yeah. of dread you get your like little monologue from samus that explains what those things are to you that they were in a previous adventure so like i i could see them do something similar with prime 4 where it's like honestly i could even see them not call it prime 4 and just do metroid prime colon something Four Star runner. looks. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, something like that. I mean, I, yeah, I'm kind of with you guys. Where like, I don't really know a whole lot about the Metroid Prime storyline timeline. The thing that I do know is that it's either alternate or disconnected from mm-hmm. slash. Like, it kind of it kind of bisects the Metroid like like the 2D Metroid games yeah. timeline in, in the middle, where it kind of takes place in this nebulous spot in between. I think Super Metroid and. Uh, um, Metroid Fusion. Yeah, I think but, that's right. Like e- even then, I think like the two D Metroid games are more focused on narrative, where the Prime games are more focused on lore. Yeah, and I think from that re- in that regard, like 
the people who care about narrative will be able to kind of glean what they need to for for to like kind of bring in you know be be the like oh this is a nintendo first person shooter we don't really see this i want to check this out and then after you check it out you realize oh this lore it runs pretty deep yeah so i mean i i see where it would make sense to do two and three and i think if prime four does end up slipping into early next year um i could see a world where we don't see prime four tomorrow but we do see the two and three remaster uh and maybe we get prime four revealed at a september direct but um Mm. or re-revealed i should say but i guess sorry go ahead I, i guess the big question for me with two and three is one do they hit the same visual fidelity as uh the first metroid prime remastered and two are they packaged together yeah that's a good question um i i want to say a while back i heard jeff grubb talking about this of like he and i think imran khan might have said something similar but like two and three have had work done but it's nothing close to the overhaul that remastered was so like Mm. if those are being intended to release um i i would assume it's less impressive than what prime remastered was and it's probably going to be more like a lot of the remastered collection we saw on like the ps4 generation of earlier stuff where it's like by and large it's the same thing it's just crisper you know Mm -hmm. Well, well there's that but there's also like with the with that first prime remaster like there was all that work done with the with all the control schemes that I suppose would kind of be easier for them to port now to the second and third ones that they've done that work. Mm. But I don't know, maybe three is crazy with the Wiimote stuff, actually. I don't know if it's different. But yeah, even true. if it's like not that same fidelity, I think it'd be cool to see those with those same old graphics, but with those uh, new control options. Yeah, and, and I, I think especially if it's not on the same level of fidelity, I, I would imagine it's a package deal where it's probably like, Maybe what Prime Master was forty when it launched, right? Yes, which is weird. I think it is, but I, I can see a world <laughs> where it's like, hey, each remaster is thirty, but if you buy them together, it's forty or something like that. I don't know. The Bayonetta deal. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think it's wild that they don't go and do stuff like that more for like it package is. deals, you know. Now, would either of you um like to see this game instead of like on the next Switch thing? Rather than this one? That's a good question. Um, I don't think know. so. You think so, Charlie? Yeah, I mean, Metroid is such a such a weird thing because it's like, we, in the past, historically, don't get a ton of games in the series. And I, I, I one part of me is like, it would be really cool to see this game as a big budget, first person shooter, holiday release kind of hit the switch with its massive install base and kind of really hit the ground running in terms of perception and discussion because i think that could be either really good or really bad for the franchise because it would end up being more popular presumably but on the other side i don't know if i love the idea of something that has kind of historically been one of nintendo's more like impressive franchises technically to debut on a system that already feels out of date in a lot of ways for a lot of people. And I, I, I am not generally in the camp of like, oh, we need a Switch 2. But I do think that that could ultimately harm how people feel about the potential for more games in this series or how this series has evolved. Because the GameCube relative to the Switch was so like powerful for its time and so interesting. And the Wii had... The Wii was not as uh comparably powerful but i think this idea that like metroid prime 4 is kind of this technical killer app for the switch 2 is really good because i think the people who are looking for something more technically impressive are probably the people who are more likely to pick up metroid prime 4 again i i don't know for sure how those demographics work out but i would assume based on the people i know and the people i talk to that those kinds of uh the, the, the those demographics line up pretty well i think you're right especially when you consider that uh halo is at an all-time low 
Retro must be looking at that studio and going, we can probably get most of those fans. I mean, yeah, honestly, I would, I've kind of been expecting they were going to throw in some kind of multiplayer mode. Not like a... <laughs> really? Not like like, like the shooter. DS one? Yeah, exactly. The DS one actually did have like an arena shooter mode, I think. Yeah, or like but, something along those lines, like running missions, yeah. right? Because like that was a... Was it Prime Hunters was the DS one? Yeah. 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 I, I could see something like that. I and mean, I think it would be cool if Nintendo launched their whatever the next console is with a game like this that is a technical showpiece and is also like... And you can play co-op or something um, just because I, I feel like that'd be cool. And that would, would um, maybe feed into more of them wanting to continue enticing people with the online service because they've talked about wanting to like make that more appealing. Um, How would they say Slayer in the Metroid world, do you think? Hunter. Uh, <laughs> cool. <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably something like that. Uh, I, I think... Yeah that we don't see that game launch with multiplayer. I think that's a season pass thing. Damn, the town goes all in on like a, on like, on a gas? I mean, I don't know, I don't know. I, I cause two had, Metro Prime 2 also had multiplayer of some kind. I never played it, but I know that that was a thing like way back in the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like, I could honestly see this being like, a thing where Nintendo's like, oh, we don't want to launch it when we have Splatoon still pretty prominent in the Fair. in the zeitgeist and in the pipeline. Let's launch Prime Four, have like maybe a bare bones multiplayer mode, but then do like a Destiny thing where they add raids in for like co op stuff and new modes and maps the way they would with a Splatoon, but maybe with a um a different cadence that focuses more on the co op than the competitive. I uh, I straight up did not consider this at all, but I think it'd be super funny if Metroid Prime Four was like Splatoon for Boomers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the only thing I think that would be a a downside with uh, releasing on the Switch, I do think it's possible, right? Um, but when we look at Prime Remastered and how impressive that was, I wonder how much of that was like this is the best we could do with the bones of that original game versus like, this is the best the Switch can do, right? Because I don't see a world where whatever they're doing with Prime 4, if it is a current gen Switch game, is like stunning showpiece. And then they were like, okay, well, let's not go that far with Prime Remastered because it's going to make prime four less impressive like i feel like they probably wanted to go all out or as best they could with Prime remastered right sure so well i i think i know we're i know we're really sticking on metroid prime for a second but like i i think the the reason why prime one got remade is probably because there's a lot of new talent that didn't work on the original metroid prime games at red at uh, retro studios that's also very true I mean, you hear that from uh, people who work closer on the developer side or as consultants where a game uh, or a studio might be remaking a game from like 20 years ago. And most of the people who worked on that game 20 years ago aren't really involved in that studio anymore. So then you have new talent that you want to kind of teach how to, how these games were made back in the day too, to kind of like bring them up to speed on the the like theory and design behind something. And I heard that a lot, especially with dead space. And I'm assuming that's probably what it is with Metroid prime as well, where you have a lot of these people like learning how to do this thing to make it look really impressive. And then four is going to be a bigger blowout because it wasn't originally designed for the GameCube. That's a very good point. These, these new retro developers know how to do one thing and it's how to make fucking Donkey Kong. (laughs) <laughs> yeah man i mean <laughs> speaking of donkey kong you know my little of course here. you you pin on this <laughs> sorry yeah, donkey kong sicko uh i every single time i think we've done this is the third june direct predictions that we've done um donkey kong has been on every thumbnail he hasn't shown up once <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I, I put it seems so real every year. I don't know. I, know, I can't it really help you. Does, it really does. And we're like we're coming off the movie this year. There's rumors he's getting a movie. Uh, there's there's a theme park expansion. Like, but the thing is, 
there was also recently on like the family boards there was like oh there was like this like vicarious visions is working on one where he was like grinding on banana peels on rails Dude, and i was like that shit's fucking insane <laughs> yeah I, what i did have you, not you hear this charlie yeah. that? no <laughs> oh my gosh okay this was like in the tears of the kingdom ramp up i was like on there daily because i was just like i needed some kind of nintendo fix um mm-hmm. I forget where it originated, but there were people who were talking about like, yeah, there was a, a build before Activision brushed Vicarious Visions into Blizzard. They were working on a 3D platformer, Donkey Kong game. Hmm. And the early like concept stuff that this person had like heard about was like, there was a lot of rail grinding, like Ratchet and Clank Sonic style, where like the the art they saw were like, he was grinding on rails like vines with banana peel feet and it just sounded cool and i know it's like oh, well vicarious visions why would they be doing a donkey Kong game activision they did that st- the uh, skylander bowser dk expansion you know and vicarious yeah. visions did crash and other platformers so. Nintendo does stuff like that too with their partnerships. I feel like like they got Ubisoft to make that that Mario Rabbit game, right? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. those and deals Nintendo happen. Nintendo is essentially a Nintendo st- support studio as well. Right. I mean, they've they've worked on a lot of Nintendo games in the Switch era. Yeah, but despite all of that, I have very. I'm not even gonna bother predicting theory crafting about Donkey Kong this year. I I really don't feel it this time. So here's what I'm gonna say. Okay, please. Selling. Donkey Kong Country, originally released 1994. Mm-hmm. Next year will be the 30th anniversary okay. of Donkey Kong Country. Okay. Some of those games are already on Switch Online. Actually, are all three on Switch Online? All three are on there, yes. So, at the very least, I think we're going to see Donkey Kong mentioned. Okay. But I wouldn't be surprised if we got a new Donkey Kong something. It might be a Donkey Kong 3D country game, but considering it will have been 30 years since the original release of Donkey Kong Country, or in around like, I want to say like 15 months. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, 50, wait, yeah, 15 months. Um, it just makes sense. Like to me, like, We've heard all these rumors. Uh, I never even knew about the Vicarious Visions thing, but there is so much evidence to point to somebody doing something with Donkey Kong Mm -hmm. because Prevailing Wind is, we're not getting a new 3D Mario anytime soon. 3D Donkey Kong kind of makes sense. Yes, it does. And for the record, it was not mentioned, but that vicarious vision thing was canned so like unknown if like nintendo took on what like was there and continued working on that and some other thing if it turned to something else i i believe the latest rumor i heard was 2d donkey kong from epd the odyssey team but like i don't know where that's shaking out you're you're making a convincing point though on top of the movie and the theme park that next year is going to be a big anniversary for donkey kong country um i think at the very least we'll see like a donkey kong character added to mario kart 8 deluxe or something like that like donkey kong will be mentioned in this direct (laughs) yeah let's go probably i like i i could i think diddy being in cart 8 makes sense um i would even take dk64 as an n64 game on the nso Mm -hmm. but i know we still got to get through like excite bike (laughs) that's still not on there yeah, neither is Banjo Kazooie, which I think will probably show up. I thought Kazooie was on there. Oh, maybe maybe it's Banjo Tooie that isn't on there, but Tooie I know that there sure were like a couple yeah. things from the original N sixty four online reveal that have not shown up there yet. Yeah, like we're, we got Mario Party one and two. We're still waiting on three. That was in the trailer. I don't know why that had, like they dropped one and two the same day. It's weird, but um, yeah. that Donkey Kong game sounds so cool. And it's and do we? You said it was canned, but does that does that mean it might also have been like taken internally or anything like that? It, it's a chance, you know. Okay. Um, I I wouldn't hold my breath. I I feel like if Nintendo wanted to do a Donkey Kong thing, they 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 probably were like, let's outdo retro. Let's let's take Donkey Kong back and like 
like make it even better than they did and they're probably going to try 2d again or something but um yeah i i don't know i mean donkey Kong country returns isn't on switch yet and the the other country games are so maybe that gets a we dip into the wii catalog like it's an hd version because i think that's on the nvidia shield and that's a similar donkey kong the we won yeah country returns i think yeah that sounds right so maybe they do something with that um he returns again but yeah. <laughs> i'll be very happy but i'm not holding my breath for tomorrow donkey kong country returns uh reorchestrated recur coped I, oh, I don't know i would take that <laughs> that'd be cool yeah but um I, I i think charlie you alluded to this we'd see donkey kong in some capacity tomorrow uh and you know there's no 3d mario but maybe he guests in this rumored 2d mario that blew up on twitter <laughs> over the last day um mm-hmm that we mentioned already but i what what's what's the vibe what's the vibe check on 2d mario games are we are we fans do we want to see one do we think they ditch the new style for one god i'm so conflicted on this one too like i i think the new super mario bros style is like visually pretty uninteresting mm-hmm but also, I really like most of those games. Like, even, even New Super Mario Bros. 2, which isn't that great, is still really fun. Because mm-hmm. um, I've said this before, and I'll say it a million times, Mario is the king of digital locomotion. Hands down. I don't, I don't think I can name a single franchise where the, the character you play as feels as good to move in. And for me, like, even if it is a New Super Mario Bros. game, I'll be very excited. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it is. I think because we haven't seen a new super mario bros game like an actually new new super mario bros game since i mean really like basically 10 years ago at this point unless we see some kind of like new super mario bros greatest hits redux where it's like half old stuff half new stuff i don't think we're gonna get a new super mario bros game for a little bit i think they've been probably that's probably why it's taken so long because they want to find this new identity for the character. Yeah. And franchise. Yeah. Because, I mean, if you don't count uh, Maker 2, there is no original 2D Mario thing on Switch. Um, which uh, is, is strange because it sells very well, you know? And I know uh, what Nintendo said they want to sell 15 million Switches this uh, fiscal year. And people were like, oh, Zelda will only get them so far. I feel like you have, if you have Zelda and an original 2D Mario yeah. coming off the movie, that's probably a good... It's going to fill in a lot of that remaining whatever million left to hit 15, I think. But Yeah, man, when you bookend something that begins with, like, Metroid Prime Remastered Zelda with a 2D Mario and make maybe some kind of, like, mario sports game or something in there too it's probably gonna sell a couple units like i i I really think especially like you said like after this movie that there will be a lot of kids asking for a switch wanting to play three things mario kart donkey kong and mario and two all all of those things are pretty well represented on switch but i think donkey kong and a Mario platform, like a 2D Mario platformer, could stand to be better represented on Switch. Omar, would you be pleased if this 2D Mario game looks like the Illumination film? Not not to the fidelity, but like the character designs, I mean, being a little more... Oh, you mean it's not going to be ray traced? <laughs> I'm out. No, uh, no hair physics. I haven't seen this Mario movie yet, still, to be honest. Mm. Uh, oh. Looks fine. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I, I think I probably would prefer that to the new Super Mario Bros. style. But I will say, I thought that style looked really good when I uh, got that first game on the DS. <laughs> but maybe it didn't uh, scale well later. Yeah, I mean, I loved that first one on the Wii. Yeah. You know? And I think it just became like those were the default asset <laughs> for Mario. So. Yeah. They gotta get some like some new music juice too, I feel like, you know? What, you're talking about the, like... the Bob Bob? I, I am tired of that. When the 3D Mario game sounds so good, I'm tired of the 2D Mario sounds. Oh, no, that's I think. fair. That's fair. That's fair. Um, get some jazz in there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
But yeah, I don't know. I'm all in. I, I, I want it to look crazy, to be honest. Like, you know, everyone says this all the time, and Ubisoft stopped using it, but those UB art games did look sick. Yeah. But I don't know. Even if it looked stupid, like freaking HD 2D or something dumb like that, just go crazy. An HD 2D Mario game would be wild. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, damn, yeah. I didn't even consider that. That'd be nuts. Um, I, I do think. It's interesting, again, going off that uh, rumor, if you want to trust it or not, uh, there's been some <laughs> illusion that the title may be something like Wonderland, like Super Mario Wonderland. Huh. So so um, it would yeah, could harken back to like the Game Boy games then? Yeah, which is kind of what I want, honestly. Like I play, uh, Super Mario Land 2 was the first Mario game I ever played on mm-hmm. the Game Boy. Um, and I played through the whole thing finally, earlier this year when Game Boy got added and I fell in love with that game even harder than the nostalgia was there for because it was just so creative like it was short but you go to like a Lego world and everything's just like toys and you're traveling through like a wind up Mario doll figure thing that's like the world map for that stage and there's these like your platform on gears and stuff. There's like all these t- like wind up toys that you're defeating. Uh, there's a space level. Omar, almost what like 15 years before Mario Galaxy. There's That's so true. Gravity physics on a Game Boy game. Um, Are there like, isn't there like honey and shit in there? Or like didn't... walls you climb on vertical, like horizontally. I I don't know. I that's okay. that, that's that's reaching back back to March, but um. No worries. Just just the, the visual like creativity of it is really what's stuck with me. And just like the concepts. Yeah. Uh, Wario is the villain also. And I do typically really love the Mario games that are land. Because like I said, first exposure to the character was Mario Land 2. Love that. Um, and then 3D Land, also love. So that's true. That game was good. If we're pivoting back to land, that gives me a lot of faith in terms of maybe, maybe it's unwarranted faith, but just the scope, the creativity, what they could do here. Um, yeah, those games get weird. I feel like they really do, and I really like that, and it's very refreshing in a way that only 3D Mario feels like it gets. Yeah. No. Totally. Like even compared to the mainline 2D ones, which like are still clearly very good, right? But um. You're talking about like um the not new Super Mario Bros. You're talking about yeah like one two ones? three world Yoshi's Island. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Um, like those are those are remarkably important video games, right? But um, yeah, like I I love three. I've never finished World. It's cool. Um, but like Land has like some sauce to it, and Land Two has a lot of sauce to it that I really yeah like. it does. So. Can you explain something to me about, uh, as a Super Mario Land 2 uh, finisher? Yes. What are the six golden coins? So (laughs) you get a single golden coin for defeating the boss of one region. You know, one region is the moon. One region is the wind-up Mario. One region is a house. Um, I'm forgetting what the other three are. But you... You, you finish the stage, you reach the boss, you defeat the boss, you get a coin, you can go back to the the castle, which I think is just Mario's castle. He owns a castle in that game. Um, Whoa. Yeah, big, big step up from, you know, a limited <laughs> Brooklyn. But um, you, you go there and you stick one of the gold coins in a slot in the door, and once you have all six, it opens up. One of the hardest Mario platforming things I've ever done is that castle. And at the end, it's a three-stage boss fight with Wario. Which oh, is tough. Cool. <laughs> but, um, yeah. It, it's fun. It's a very good game. It's If you have NSO, I think it's still worth checking out. But going back what to if, land as a title is uh, makes me happy. What if? Yes. For the title drop for this game... <laughs> Yeah. It is. It is, in fact, the rumored Super Mario Wonderland. Mm-hmm. It's Super Mario. You know, it's the normal Mario logo, and the W is the Wario logo. Ooh. Whoa! 
and it's like some Last of Us 2 kind of thing <laughs> where you alternate between Mario and Wario, and they have different gameplay styles. One is like, you know, standard Mario, Mario Land stuff, and the other is like the fast-paced Pizza Tower, Wario like Land. Mario Land? That would be really cool, actually. Mm-hmm. That'd be neat. I don't, think, I don't think that would happen, but that would be crazy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they made what a if... lot of those Wario Land games, and they haven't done one in a while, you know? Sure. That'd be cool. I'm not familiar with the Wario lore in general but is it possible that like wario is a persona of mario and this is his <laughs> descent i mean now you get into like <laughs> mario paper mario storytelling right that's like I, I have no idea that's some out there stuff some high i probably sound like stuff. a fake mario fan <laughs> <laughs> wait so like 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 i'm imagining wario like so wario is just mario but like a different personality yeah if, if i could make a comparison have you seen um um uh, todd phillips is a uh, joker <laughs> yes I have. perhaps maybe mario gets pushed to his limit <laughs> <laughs> uh, i would love that <laughs> that'd be wonderful oh man um y- you said hd 2d mario i did, I did. And that, that also brings to mind another thing that the internet's talking about today. Dragon Quest Triple. No, but that okay. that would make more sense than what I'm seeing here. Let's um, hear it. Charlie, what's your take on this uh, people saying Super Mario RPG remake is going to be here? <sighs> I, I, this, this, this rumor account, uh, I forget their name. <laughs> I think it's like, it's, it's something it the Poro right? ND. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, P or O N D. They are an interesting account that follows the same lines that we have seen yeah. from a number of other, uh, you know, a, a number of other like rumor slash leak slash whatever kind of Nintendo based Twitter accounts yeah. that have kind of dominated the news cycle mm-hmm. for a long time. This person's track record seems to be pretty solid. But we also have no way of proving that they didn't just tweet a bunch of stuff out yeah. and then, like, on private, delete all that stuff and then go off of private. Uh, because the only evidence of interact, I-, I was looking at this last night because the only, like, consistent evidence of interactions with this tweet, because you can't check when a like was made, is that, um, like, there are some quote tweets to some of these some of these tweets, but there are a lot of them last night before this this account got like a hundred that like like thousands of followers they were all private quotes Mm -hmm. so you don't know where they came from Mm -hmm. um which to me is interesting (laughs) to say the least um so to removing the tinfoil hat though uh if this person is right i would imagine we're seeing a mario rpg remake sometime soon what yeah. if I told you, Charlie, that uh, there's another user on Twitter with the name uh, Gino Number One, who's also confirming the existence of Super Mario RPG remake? The Twitter, if their name is Gino Number One, I'm going to assume that they're they're saying that before every single direct. <laughs> I think so. So the thing with this one, I mean, absolutely no disrespect to the people who love this game. Here it comes. <laughs> yeah, here comes the disrespect. Not a single person under the age of 28 is buying this thing, right? Or getting hyped for it off the rip. Like, they maybe people would buy it. I would definitely be curious to check it out. But, like, you say, like, Super Mario RPG 7 Stars Remake. How many people are you getting with that? Like, losing their minds. I understand Gino is this, like, popular character for some reason that people wanted in Smash Forever. But, like... I don't know, because there's also been rumors in the Mario RPG world, right, that there's a Paper Mario remake, and that one dates back even further as a rumor. Um, And I believe... um, I think I was listening to uh, Nate the Hate, Nate Drake from Family Boards was saying, like, I've... I I can say that the Paper Mario remake project is something I'm aware of. He doesn't know what it is, but, like, 
that thing's been thrown around since I think like January, and I I struggle to see a world where Paper Mario RPG remake and also S Super Mario Seven Stars RPG remake are both happening. Um, and Paper Mario is like a brand, you know. Yeah. Super Mario RPG is not. I don't know how much they can get like carry off that, uh, but. Sorry to Super Mario RPG fans. I didn't mean to upset you, but I just don't see it. It wouldn't surprise me if they retooled Mario RPG into, like, Mario and Luigi Legend of the Seven Stars or something. Sure. Or maybe, like, like reappearance of the Seven Stars, and it's, like, a sequel, reboot, remake thing, mm -hmm. where it's, like, largely the same game, but, like, the only difference is that Mario and Luigi are together the entire game. Mm -hmm. I could see that happening. I don't know. Like, it... The, the the entire like rumor around this whole thing is so weird because like you said it's surrounded by layers of other conflicting rumors that are also like i would argue just as weighty yeah so i think it's weird too like you know i don't know how much uh you guys put into like a cross media promotion or whatever but they just put out that movie i think it'd be weird for all those kids that saw that to then like I don't know, play Super Mario RPG this Christmas. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I know people have said, like, the characterization of Bowser in the movie is similar to the RPG, but, like, the, I, I feel like a kid's not going to pick up on that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> For one thing. And the other thing is Super Mario RPG was released on the Super Nintendo Classic. So... I don't like maybe they're holding it off Super Nintendo Online for a reason, but like I don't know. They just does Square have any on games it. on uh on that service? I don't believe so. Huh. Like Final Fantasy VI isn't on there. None of the Final Fantasies are on there. Well, they're on the eShop now, but um. Oh right. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, maybe they just sell it as a ROM on the eShop or something, but I, I don't think we get a remake of this thing. Personally. Dude, those fucking sprites will look so bad upscaled. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but. Yeah, and I, I, I've heard some people throw out HD2D for this one, and, like, HD2D is good for some games. I don't think HD2D would look good with Super Mario RPG. You know what it would look good on? That's also on What's the that? Super Nintendo. Uh, classics Ooh. lineup, whatever on the NSO. Uh, Chrono Trigger. Mm. That there is a ten out of ten video game. That's uh, just sitting there, doing nothing except being on Steam. Like, come on, what what are we gonna do with <laughs> this thing? Um, and I I know there's like stuff with allegedly there was like back and forth drama legal stuff with the the licensing of this game but it's on steam they're still selling it so i i think they probably figured it out the version i played on steam a couple years ago has been updated a lot since that initial you know controversial version that went up on steam so if it's a port based off of that hell yeah if it's hd2d absolutely hell yeah but um anything with chrono would be cool but I know Square is super busy with like a million Final Fantasy remakes and also Dragon <laughs> Quest three, so yeah, I don't know. I, I I think the interesting part about bringing back an old Square game, like you mentioned, is like licensing is seemingly a very consistent issue. I mean, whether it's including a character in Smash Bros. or mm -hmm. putting games out on platforms that aren't PC, and I honestly could very well see this being a thing where like the only way they can justify spending this much money on licensing and stuff like that for Mario RPG to get the rights to it, to put it back on switch is to remake it fully. Sure. I heard that they only ported Chrono Cross because uh, the PS3 store was going to shut down, hmm. which really? if that was the case and we need uh, steam to go down as well. So uh, let's get it. <laughs> Epic game store forever. Oh, <laughs> uh. Well, I, I think those are all the rumors from today. Unless I'm forgetting any of them. Um, so, so what are we? What are we thinking? General prediction wise, what what do we want to see out of this direct that uh, 
we haven't touched on rumor wise because this is kind of the first real blank slate we that we've had with Nintendo in a minute, but it's also interesting because we're juggling just how much longer do we have with the Switch? Is there a new console late next year? Like is is that gonna influence what we get on this thing? Is it gonna be ports, remasters? What 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 what's the general scope you guys are expecting for games tomorrow? Is it gonna be a lot of old stuff or some some smaller projects? Uh, IP like Star Fox or Kid Icarus getting some love in the the final days of the Switch. What, what's what's the expectation? I think we see Nintendo. I, I I don't think we see more than one or two like relatively niche franchises. I also think that this uh, if this Puro ND person is to be trusted, and if the timelines line up, we're probably going to see Detective Pikachu too tomorrow oh okay uh i think i think any something pokemon related is definitely a lock i mean we have confirmation of dlc for scarlet and violet that hasn't really been shown off a whole lot beyond the initial reveal yeah and that was an image also like an art yeah. image. it wasn't in game so so i i think that's that's a lock something pokemon either either scarlet and violet dlc and or detective pikachu 2 Omar, you think there's any shot that uh, that DLC has a stable frame rate? Pokemon? Yeah. No. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think you're right. But... It's just how they work. It's cool. Yeah. D I, 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 this is reaching back into the earlier rumor mills, and this is also a regular for our summer predictions, but what's up with F-Zero? <laughs> I know both of you guys are probably itching to talk about F Zero, but what 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 are you thinking is the fate of F Zero tomorrow? Well, <laughs> I heard people were talking about a GX remaster at one point. That seemed like it was on the table. I don't know how reputable it was, but that would make me happy, extremely happy. So yeah, I'd I like mean... to see that. Between the Switch and the 3DS, there have been a good amount of GameCube remakes. And if there's a time to do it, it's kind of now. You right? think so for F-Zero? I mean, the Switch has such a, an engaged user base that releasing something like an F-Zero could potentially be really big. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know, but I, I don't think it's happening. But like, if there's a time to do it, it would be now. I think the last time we did this, Charlie, you were uh, talking about a, a Yakuza uh, RGG Studio Brawler uh, starring Captain Falcon. I want that game so bad. <laughs> It'll never happen, ever. But a brawler racer where you're fucking running around Mute City would be so, so cool. And I, I know that'll never happen, but I mean, Captain Falcon at this point is more of a scrapper than he is a racer to most people. I mean, he's been in more Smash games than, <laughs> than anything else, I think. Yeah. And so having that that DNA kind of represented, because at this point that is more iconic to the character than the Blue Falcon itself, uh, would be really cool, but it'll never happen. But I, I would love to see the F-Zero franchise kind of take a leap in that direction. Wasn't, I think it'd be cool. There was a rumor a while ago that Bandai Namco was working on some GameCube remaster remake, right? Was that did that end up being Baton Kaidos or was that do we still not? I don't think it was that. Game? But also, I don't know if I remember it specifically being a GameCube remaster or remake. Okay. I, it, I, I, go ahead. In the the rumor kind of cycle about that game or that remake. I've heard, yeah, I've heard a lot of stuff about GameCube games, which seems to be, like, honestly, in the Switch's lifetime, the prevailing rumor that generally GameCube games are being remade. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were there have been rumors about all sorts of different remakes for GameCube games, and I think GX and Thousand Year Door are currently, like, kind of the front runners now that Prime Remastered is out. Yeah. I mean, I GameCube was, like... <laughs> my console growing up so i love that but i feel like it hasn't been as present as a lot of the rumors we're setting it up to be um no they I, never I, put out the gamecube joy cons <laughs> no they didn't uh 
and the, I, I feel like there's also I know this happened with the 3ds but like I, I feel like you're just sitting on Luigi's Mansion right like that that True. one makes a lot of sense I, I, I doubt we would get a Luigi's Mansion 4 on this console so like I don't know weird but yeah F-Zero or Thousand Year Door I mean honestly I'd probably put chips on both of those before I put chips on Super Paper or Super Mario RPG showing up so. Yeah, no, I, I could I could definitely see that. But I the other thing I was gonna say was that the same rumors about Bandai Namco working on some kind of action game remaster have also been about uh Kid Icarus. Mm, okay. And I think those rumors are kind of linked, but I, I, I would imagine it's probably one or the other. I believe it. Kid I'm Icarus. in. Yeah. It seemed like they were kind of teasing it a little bit or being a little bit cheeky with it. <laughs> I mean, kind of, yeah. Like, uh, Sakurai was talking about... Didn't he talk about it recently, like, on his YouTube channel? I think so. I think he said something like, wouldn't it be great to be able to play this <laughs> on, like, a Switch or something? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was that was pretty much the gist of it. And there have been other, like, teases, or he's mentioned that he was he's, like, working on his next game a couple years ago. And those guys, um, him and uh, Namco are pretty linked, right, I feel like, at this point? Yeah. That does make a lot of sense, actually. Now you're saying that. So, d did either of you play Kid Icarus Uprising? Oh, just oh, a bit. So much. Damn. Love that game. Uh, what what scope would you want to see out of uh, seeing that on Switch? Like, are we are we wanting like director's cut, like extra content, or just like a graphical overhaul? And obviously controls, I assume. A director's cut would be very funny because I don't know what else they would add to that game <laughs> story-wise because mm -hmm. it, it goes so many places. Mm -hmm. But I think, yeah, I think something along those lines of a director's cut or a deluxe or maybe even it's like, um, it's it's kind of like a Metroid Prime Remaster situation where they sell it for 40, 50 bucks and then they pair that with like a, a cinematic like title reveal with just like a splash screen with maybe some music or sound effects or something like the way they did Metroid Prime 4. Oh, for a new Kid Icarus also? Yeah. Ooh. That'd because be sick. I, as much as it would be cool to see Sakurai involved in a remaster, like, I don't really think that that's his style. Sure. Like, we, we've never seen um, a game that he's worked on kind of be remade in that way where it's like a full-on like revamp of the full game mm -hmm. and i i think nintendo would probably not I, I don't think he or nintendo would be interested in having his kind of developmental resources specifically involved for a one-to-one -one remake so yeah it's either going to be have to be a director's cut or a, a new game packaged with the, the old one i think if, if there is something new there now, correct me if I'm wrong, Charlie, but that game is kind of like a rail shooter, right? Some of it is, some of it isn't. Okay. Um, well, consider consider this. What if it's like, I'm going to revive another dormant Nintendo franchise and make Sin and Punishment 3? Which would be sick. <laughs> it's like a shooter. Punishment is honestly like really? I know the name, but I, I've never like seen oh, gameplay for it. The first game, the first game is about ninety minutes, and it's on NSO. Uh, hmm. Pretty great. It's just like a, it's it is a pretty simple rail shooter, very much inspired by Evangelion. Okay. Yeah. And that's a Nintendo uh, franchise. Yep. Uh, Treasure made it, and then they made a sequel on the Wii, which is even better. And oh. uh, yeah, they just kind of don't make games anymore, though. A Treasure. Right. So uh, I'm kind of hoping, but that's a bit of a complete dream thing. I mean, I don't know. Those are on NSO, aren't they? The first one is. First one is, okay. Two is a Wii game, so no word. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm surprised we haven't seen more of that porting effort, right? Uh, especially if we are in the last 18 or so months of a world with only one Nintendo console. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But and they have that like Wii emulator or something, right? They, they have those tools. Yeah. So like, I wonder. Like we brought up Country Returns earlier. Uh, I, I yeah. wonder if this is that time where it starts swinging back into that. Maybe not like 
I mean, it'd be cool if they did like. Um, I know they wouldn't do this because if you if you can sell like a Mario Galaxy two or Country Returns for sixty dollars on Switch, they would do that. But like something like Nintendo Select, but for games from the last two generations, right? Which it's like, yeah, they still kind of hold up for the most part outside of their visuals. Just need a little bit of an operas, but um, I would love it. I would too. But, I would um, love it. Yeah, I don't know. And it's called the Virtual Console. <laughs> yeah, what a concept. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't see Nintendo doing the, the the Nintendo selects for the Switch. Oh, come on! I I want them to, uh, and as somebody who who generally is not inclined to pay much for for a video game these days, yeah. uh, I would like really really like that. But I just don't think they are. I mean, we've seen how stingy they've been with charging full price for games basically year round. Yeah, that. I don't see a Nintendo Select thing happening. I think Metroid Prime Remastered is the best we're going to get. Yeah, I love a good $40 sale on Breath of the Wild. You know? <laughs> Seriously, that's the thing. I just cannot imagine like Breath of the Wild being $20. <laughs> yeah, that's a, a different era, you know? Like, yeah. current, uh, what, Furukawa is like fully business minded. It's like, well, yeah, if they're selling for 60 just keep selling them for 60 so. But then, but then, why is Metroid Prime Remastered forty? It doesn't make sense. I don't know. I really don't. Is it because they're playing to sell three? <laughs> Maybe it is. Maybe, and then you're spending one hundred twenty at the end. Good but, God. They got me. Um. What? What are their... two hundred forty? Because you gotta buy the digital version first. Oh, true. I forgot about <laughs> that. Um. I mean, in terms of like hope for this year. Do, do you guys think it is going to be pretty minimal? Like, do you think it's probably like something on the level of a 2D Mario and then just DLC and maybe something small? Because earlier this year, there was talk that the second half or post Tears of the Kingdom switch looks barren. But um, do, you, do you think that narrative changes at all after the direct tomorrow? Yeah, if they have a freaking Mario game as well as Zelda, I think they're good. Like... I think it was a good year in the end. Yeah, I think when you look at like other first party developers and studios, like Sony and Microsoft both have like decent lineups for this year, but it's not like there there's this expectation for Nintendo because they are their their consoles are so driven by first party things that like the the, the cadence that Nintendo wants to hit is one game a month. Yeah. And if you look at it, or one release a month, I should say. And if you look at it like that, I mean, we have everybody's one to switch, Pikmin Four, uh, Pokemon DLC, either two D Mario or a Metroid game, maybe, and then like Splatoon Three major DLC, and that's basically the rest of the year sold, or the rest of the year spoken for at that point. And so I, I don't really think the public opinion is going to get swayed that much. Because I think 2D games in general are kind of like, they're not view, universally regarded as cheap, but it's definitely going to be a situation where it's if it's a 2D game, people aren't really going to change their tune on the whole Nintendo's Baron for the rest of the year. But if it's a if it's Metroid Prime 4, I can see that narrative changing. Charlie, can I ask, did you play that Prince of Persia game at Summer Games Fest? I did not get to, no. Okay. Um I would love to see that on Switch. I think it's coming to Switch. I probably. believe it. I think it's been announced. Um, I think Jeff Keighley said it was 60 frames even. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's that's pretty good. I No, I, I uh, the Ubisoft stuff was all separate from the Summer Game Fest stuff. So I, uh, I see. I also, I'll get into it off air, but it, sure. it, just a lot of complicated scheduling things. And I was late to it, so invites didn't really get to me. But um no, I think I think you're right. I think Prince of Persia and a number of other third party games that we've already seen are going to show up at this direct, and I think well, that's going to be a bulk of it. I brought that up only because if we were talking about like the 2D and public perception, I was surprised that some people were not into paying sixty bucks for that game. So previously, I would have thought it would have been fine having a 2D Mario, but yeah, I guess people would wouldn't see that. Well, yeah, actually, it's funny to say that because I believe Prince of Persia is fifty. Is it? Oh, I could be wrong. Uh, that's on that. cool. But you know what is sixty? I would pay 70, of course. Uh, what's Absolutely. 60? I, 
to, to give them a sign, a message, yes, I would. Uh, <laughs> Sonic Superstars is 60. People are not happy about that one. <laughs> what? Really? Yeah, people were like, were like appalled that 2D Sonic, Sonic Superstars is uh, 60 bills. Huh. Yeah. Does 2D Mario shoot for 70, though? Because we know it's not going to be every game is going to be 70. Absolutely not. Yeah. I don't think anything aside from Mario, like 3D Mario 3D. and Zelda, hit that price point. And On maybe Metroid Switch, Dreadful. Right? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's just, it's, we're just testing the waters, you know? 10 million, three days, hot damn. Uh, what yeah, was that Zelda? True. Is that what? How much that sold? I believe mm -hmm. that's what the metric was. Yeah, that's crazy. And we have we have a shareholder uh, meeting coming up for Nintendo as well, so we'll probably hear that it's. I would imagine sitting around like fifteen million oh, <laughs> at this point, sure. at least. Yeah, um, I'm get I'm getting the vibe. Neither of you think that we're getting Switch Two tomorrow. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't think so. Maybe we get like a like a Pikmin. Swoled or something. That'd be crazy. I mean, it, to to me, it's kind of crazy that Pikmin still exists, but I think it's just because of Miyamoto's involvement. So, like, I'm sure he would try his hardest to get a special edition console for those those fellas. I, I did not know Pikmin and Mario are, like, the same team, or I guess 2D Mario, <laughs> or the same studio. Oh, really? I think so. I think that's what I heard, but I don't know. Hmm. What, what, about, what about some out there things? Okay, I got one. Ooh, this, one, this one's crazy though okay how how close are you guys following the the activision microsoft merger <laughs> barely vaguely all right well at one point i think uh phil oh, spencer and nintendo they signed that deal right for the next 10 years of call of duty on nintendo or whatever <laughs> uh-huh well at this point in the year in any other year we would have this fall's call of duty game announced but we don't have it yet <laughs> oh my god so i'm thinking tomorrow uh direct opens with silk mctavish uh and it's that airport from uh Modern Warfare 209 no russian and we get Modern Warfare 3 for this year on switch the thing is i'm right the thing, the thing is, is i don't right. i don't think you're like a hundred percent wrong because <laughs> Activision and Xbox want that thing to go through so if they revealed their like weird like half spin-off sequel like the rumor is what the new call of duty was like an expansion that they turned into a full game yeah yeah if if they were if they reveal that on the switch stage and they don't come it's like is this streaming no comment <laughs> you know dude and then it's like oh see look at that because that hearing is like soon i think <laughs> i don't think it's likely but i did say for wild ones and that's not impossible <laughs> Is the thing. It's not the dumbest thing I could have said. It's, okay, so it's I have not. a related question. Okay. Is that the Call of Duty that you would want on Switch? Out of the entire pantheon of COD games, is that the one that you would want to kind of be the th first thing to break ground for that franchise? Oh, well, I'm talking about like a Modern Warfare 3, like 2023 release. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, not okay. the remaster. Like, I'm saying like <laughs> Warzone included. <laughs> oh. I, I, not even the remaster. I'm talking like the original Modern Warfare 3, like running on like a ROM or something, or like an emulator. <laughs> yeah. No, I think, uh, I mean, like, I think that would be a fun curiosity, but I think if they want to, if if this is in service of that deal and Microsoft, then they got to put the full one out. And personally, for me, I guess I would get more enjoyment out of seeing how a uh, current reboot Call of Duty runs on a Switch, I suppose. Hmm. That's absurd. But again, it's I I'm not gonna say with hundred percent certainty that it's not happening. <laughs> it's gonna happen. <laughs> uh, Charlie, do you got a do you got a wild one in mind? I think my wild one was probably the the Wonderland thing being half Mario, half Wario. Okay, okay, I can see that. Yeah. But if I'm gonna if I'm gonna do if I'm gonna do another thing where I'm pulling it out of thin air, um, uh, Mercury Steam Super Metroid remake. Yo. Ooh, that'd be quite cool. Honestly, any new 2D Metroid, I, I'd be super down for. Because I Same. love Dread. Dread is like one of my favorite Nintendo games now. Um, that'd be that'd be sweet. Um, 
I'm going to say we see... Do you remember a couple years ago we had that Nintendo Direct where I think it was like in the first half of the year um, they were talking about like Chocobo Grand Prix whatever and then yes. the, the announcer guy got super serious and he was like for the first time Final Ooh. Fantasy 7 8 and 9 are coming to the Nintendo Switch. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because that was kind of like a Final Fantasy block, I'm gonna say we see Tetsuya Nomura. Oh, he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna do the snap, and he's gonna say, "Hi, I'm Tetsuya Nomura, God of Kingdom Hearts. I want to apologize for the Integrum masterpiece it's Cloud Streaming Edition," and he's gonna announce native versions. Of the collections, three is not going to be able to run on the Switch. Uh, native versions of one, the one and two collections, like that's like six things, uh, and also then reveal the Sora amiibo for Smash Ultimate because I don't think we have that yet or have seen that yet. I don't think we have either. No, that would be cool. And then also say I have one more thing for you. And it's, it's gonna oh, no. it's gonna cut to Sephiroth. Okay. But it's an announcement that Ever Crisis is gonna be on Switch, not yep. Seven Remake. <laughs> I I one hundred percent could see Ever Crisis coming to Switch for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I will say this: I I'm not a developer, but I do know that uh, Kingdom Hearts Three did run in Unreal Engine Four. Mm -hmm. And my understanding, again, I'm not a developer, I'm not an engineer, but my understanding is that Unreal Engine as a whole scales relatively well mm -hmm. from different platform to different platform. Mm -hmm. And theoretically, like, I mean, we get Fortnite on Switch and look at look at the difference between Switch version and like PS5, yeah. right? It wouldn't surprise me if we get some kind of super paired back version of Kingdom Hearts 3. Like not quite as paired back as like Final Fantasy fifteen mobile. Yeah. But something along those lines. If if that happens. Yeah. I mean I going back to the stuff from today, I believe there were I, I didn't fully read into this, but I thought I saw somebody say that Pikmin four is on Unreal Four. Yeah, I saw that. So Which you know, also the H A two D stuff is also UE four, I believe. Oh. So what that got me thinking maybe that Mario game is H2D, the 2D one. Yeah. Hmm. They use it a bunch, I guess. That um, would be something. I uh, mean, while we're talking about Square Enix, yeah. uh, there's a lot of different Dragon Quest things happening. True. Yes. We have that, that Dragon Quest HD 2D uh, remake for three. Yeah. We have people talking about um, Dragon Quest monsters coming to Switch. Mm-hmm. I think that that Twitter Insider account tweeted that Dragon Quest they up did. today or something. Yeah, yeah. And I, also, there's a. Um, I mean, we had Dragon Quest twelve revealed a while ago, but we've never seen anything for it. Yeah. And I'm not super keyed into those those circles around discussions of rumors for Dragon Quest, but it would not surprise me because Dragon Quest is pretty consistently. Uh, ride or die Nintendo, unless Nintendo's doing very poorly, that we could very easily see a Dragon Quest twelve trailer open up the show tomorrow. I'm I'm glad you bring this up because one of the questions I wanted to ask was about show closers, mm. and I I was theory crafted when you were saying when you were just uh, talking about that stuff. So Dragon Quest typically, like what you're saying, from my understanding, from like some diehards who have talked about this at length the whatever the best selling console is at the time is what the next dragon quest releases on mm -hmm. it's the reason why after dragon quest 8 which i would love to see on switch they should do that so like please um dragon quest 8 was a ps2 and 9 you'd assume okay another giant 3d rpg no it was a ds exclusive because the ds was the best selling piece of hardware at mm -hmm. the time uh 10 was the mmo and then 11 came back to ps4 because ps4 
was selling super well. Uh, there was a 3DS version that I don't think the U.S. ever got, but um, it was, it was a, that was a PS4 game, right? What's the best-selling hardware right now? The Switch. That's right. I, I could see a world where Dragon Quest XII was built for Switch, but maybe not the current Switch. Because, hmm. if you recall... What was the first game that was announced for the NX? Sonic I know this. Forces. Was it really? It, it, no, I'm kidding. It was either <laughs> Sonic Forces or Dragon Quest XI. It was Dragon Quest XI. I'm Dragon pretty Quest sure it was Dragon Quest XI. <laughs> um, I mean, may, maybe that's what they, they closed the show on, is Dragon Quest XII, and everyone's like, they love mm-hmm. saying this. This looks too good to be on the Switch. And maybe this time it is too good to be on the Switch. And there's no They've comment. said that about a few too many games at this point. Yeah, I don't they know. Have, they have. Oh, are you like Dragon Quest? What's your what's your your thought and, on all this? And Bayonetta three did get downrated. I mean, I'd believe it. I I would have to look, but I believe. <laughs> I don't really mean that. I'm not trying to be an asshole. I'm just saying that one trailer looked way too good, and then the game did not look as good as that. Hmm. But that's all I got. Um, where was that? What was the question? I'm sorry. Any uh, Dragon Quest content tomorrow? Uh, any of the projects? Twelve. What, what, what there's that. Thinking? There's that die game coming out. Uh, the the adventure of die, right? Do you know uh, that there's a, there's a Dragon Quest anime? And I think they're making a game based on the anime. That I think people are participating for like, I guess September. I've seen Wario tweet about it. I haven't looked into it beyond that though. Um, I think, I think if like. I still kind of think if anything Dragon Quest Twelve related happened, it would be like a like a press conference in Japan first, I guess. Mm-hmm. I know we've already seen the announcement, but I don't know. And like, didn't the the composer like just die, or was that like two years ago? I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, I feel like we're a bit out on Twelve. That's fair. Well, I mean, Eleven was 2017. Yes. So it's been a minute. Well, when was when was nine? Nine. And you can count the MMO as ten if you want, but we never got that in America. Nine. Just was I want to say it was two thousand nine. I had nine. Yeah. On my DS, I, I want to say that was two thousand nine. I could be wrong. Uh, I just think you know these games they take longer than never to make. You know. That's true. And uh, I'm not. I'm thinking it's not time yet. I do feel like, though, do you? Th- I was going to ask you, Kingdom Hearts guy, as like, you know, is it time for another spinoff yet? Here's the thing like about a, the spinoffs, man. I mean, Melody Memory was great. I really like that one. Uh, that was like their theater rhythm, basically. It, it, it seems like the, like the lore-heavy spinoff games have been replaced by mobile games now. And not like the, the coded like flip phone mobile game from yeah back x in the or day. whatever cross. yeah like union cross dark road uh the next missing link is the next one and that's like pokemon go well what if then like this trailer here today your closer is like the kingdom hearts 4 trailer this b3 sorely needs i would adore that but i at this point with their relationship with square enix i would kind of believe that it's back to being a playstation exclusive for the the numbered games Maybe, I don't know. It feels it feels too quiet with all this Final Fantasy news recently, and no Kingdom Hearts Four stuff. I know I agree with you, but I I don't know if this is the place. No, I don't fair. think we hear a word of Kingdom Hearts Four until after Seven Rebirth comes out. Uh, yeah, I could like maybe see something at Game Awards, but um, yeah, I think you're probably right. Yeah, but what what do we think closes the show? Because I don't think it would be Pikmin. No. That's 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 the middle of the show for sure. Absolutely. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll we'll switch this to a two-parter. This is the the last thing I can think of question-wise. What do we think each opens the show and closes the show? If you had to had to play some bets, because I I agree with you. I think Pikmin Four is likely to be the midpoint of like, okay, take a break, take a breather. Let's talk about Pikmin. Let's keep going. Um. Omar, I don't know if you think Pikmin's going to show up at the Pikmin? beginning or end, but... I think Pikmin will be in the middle, and okay. I'm going to go to the bathroom. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think the show opens with uh, Mario. 
Okay. I guess I believe in that now. Mm-hmm. And I think it closes with a, a Xenoblade Chronicles X remaster or something. <laughs> I don't know. Something dumb. No, no disrespect. <laughs> <laughs> Xenoblade Warriors. I have heard rumors of that. I have too, and I'm kind of surprised it hasn't happened yet. Yeah, I think I think now's the time. I think they. It sounds like I haven't played. I actually haven't finished any of those games, and I've played through like probably a third of Xenoblade Chronicles. But my impression is that they've kind of wrapped up this the the this like chapter of the Xenoblade story. Yeah, and I could very well see a kind of like Hyrule Warriors. The timelines are converging. Whatever kind of thing with all the characters from every Xenoblade game and Xenogears and stuff like that showing up in a warrior style game. That would not be a shock to me whatsoever. It makes sense. You know, I think it's one of the last remaining Nintendo franchises that like when you see what they do with those warriors games, like it kind of, you can like can draw connections to what would work there. Right. Like they're, Totally. Hyrule Warriors makes a lot of sense. Fire Emblem Warriors makes a lot of sense. Xenoblade Warriors also makes a lot of sense. I don't know what else beyond that. Mm-hmm. Um, like, maybe that's how you get your F Zero Warriors. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> hop in a car, do like a, a drift, and like wipe out a wave of. Don't even say that shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, I could, I could see like a, a, a Xenoblade Warriors. That's a really good like. You know, uh, a December game, a February game. That is such a December uh, an August game. game. You know, yeah. Xenoblade, Xenoblade games. I, my impression is that they are pretty consistently December games. But yeah, I could, I could see a Xenoblade thing happening. I feel like always oh, Xenoblade. You said, yeah. I feel like Warriors is always February, but maybe that was like one time and it's just been stuck in my mind. Yeah, I mean the Age of Calamity was like fall. Yeah, but Persona Five Scramble was Feb. Yeah. I, I think three hopes was also early in the year, but um You think Xenoblade Warriors got uh got Cosmos in it? That's a Xenosaga yeah. character, right? Yeah. I think so. Alright, let's go. I'm in. Sure. <laughs> Th- yeah, that's the that's the big brain thing. They connect all the Xeno games together with the Warriors. Whoa. I think Cosmos was in two. Really? Really? I haven't played it, but that I I know that there's something with because it's, it's a gotcha game, you know, and they have hmm. there is something from either Xeno Gears or Xeno Saga. I don't really know how the Xeno stuff connects, but I do know that there is some crossover from previous Xeno games into the Xenoblade Chronicles series. Damn. Yeah, Charlie, did you say your opener and closer? I haven't yet. I am. I, I was stalling a little bit. Are you still thinking, I, can, I, can, I can go. I can do something. Can go I ahead. also go actually ahead. interject really quick sure. beforehand? Yeah. I forgot about a couple Atlas games. Oh, yeah. Sure. Oh, I, yeah. I've heard yeah. about a Shin Megami Tensei 5 Complete Edition potentially. Oh, interesting. Which would be pretty cool because uh, not because I haven't played it yet, but I kind of haven't played it because I heard it kind of ran pretty poorly on Switch. And I, I saw there were rumors about it coming to like PlayStation and like PC. Mm hmm. So I'm just kind of hoping that happens and then it's like, oh yeah, it's coming to, to PC as well. Be Which cool. would be cool. I want to play that. And then uh, I guess like, question for the for the chat. I mean, I mean you guys. Sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's a Persona 3 Reload that got announced at Xbox. Oh but, yeah, that's uh, showing up. Well, it hasn't been announced for Switch yet. Unlike the Tactics game. Here's so I guess bet. I was wondering, is there any chance that it's just not on Switch? I think Nintendo thinks a mainline Persona game announcement has a lot more weight than a Persona 5 Tactics. spinoff. Is Makes sense. Guess. Um that'd be cool. Yeah. I, I think three reload is probably gonna show up here. Um I, that that feels like a lock. And SMT five would a complete edition would be cool, but I, I wonder if you would do that at a non Nintendo show though, because like think think with Persona, how that's typically a PlayStation exclusive. Xbox is the one that got the announcements, right? Yeah. It's like, hey, but, look, uh, it's leaving the, where it was before, so maybe. I suppose so, but I, I don't know. We haven't seen that happen with SMT yet, sure. and the I Xbox mean, show just passed, so I guess this is the next best guess. Sure. How did uh, how did Persona show up last year? Do you guys remember? On Switch. Yeah, because I know. 
I know the Persona stuff got announced for Xbox. Then yes. it kind of trickled out later that it was for PlayStation and maybe Switch, but it got addressed in the partner showcase, I think. That I happened. think that's right, yeah. Um, yeah. But was it a sizzle reel or was it a full trailer? Because I think if this is a, a full direct compared to a, a partner showcase, this is like sizzle reel material for sure. I, I think you're right. I feel like I remember the Morgana voice actor going over both games on a Nintendo stream. That's a memory I have. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I think it'll probably be a sizzle reel, like you said. But, um, for openers and closers, though, I'm going to... I, I I think... The, I feel like the smart thing is you open on 2D Mario and you end on Metroid Prime 4, but I'm going to say end on 2D Mario and open with... Oh, God. Um, I, I don't want to say Xenoblade Warriors since we just talked about it so much, but I, I, I that's the level of something I'm expecting. Because I just think about that time I was super excited. I thought we were getting a new Fire Emblem, and then I thought it was going to be a sequel to Three Houses, and it was like, oh, fuck, it's a Warriors game. Okay. <laughs> and so, that's like the first thing of the Direct. So yeah, I, I think we'll get some Warriors game, Xenoblade or not, to open, and then 2D Mario to close. That's my guess. Yeah, I'm with you in that we're not seeing Metroid Prime 4 and a 2D Mario, if those both, if the 2D Mario even exists. Yeah. Um, and I think whichever one of those is in this Direct closes it out. And I, I, I honestly, like, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, yeah, Dragon Quest Twelve is opening this show. Damn. Uh, I think that, you know, there's precedent for other stuff with uh, previous Nintendo Directs, especially recently, where they open with something that isn't as big as the closer yeah like i think a lot of showcases elsewhere we see a big opener and a big closer and then some like stuff in between but i think nintendo kind of likes to do a bit of a ramp up where obviously they do still have a punchy opening but like last time it was fire emblem which is like it's a big series but in terms of nintendo's heavy hitters i don't know if that's what i think most people expected to open the show Last year, I th or uh, uh, before that, I think it was uh, Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak or the other DLC that opened up the Direct. And so I think something that's either like kind of a, a partially third party or fully third party would not surprise me. Something like a Dragon Quest, especially considering how big that franchise is, I could totally see that being the big pop at the beginning. That doesn't make sense. And I, I feel like we're due on some update because what... The Omar, was that Dragon Quest Twelve announcement like two years ago now, or was that last year? Yeah, it's been a while. That's nuts. Yeah, I, I want to say like I think they updated the website too, kind of recently. Mm, there you go. Yeah, I mean, I I feel like also you know PlayStation's going super hard on Final Fantasy. I feel like the Nintendo crowd kind of cares more about Dragon Quest. That's just my perception. I could be wrong, but that's the vibe. Just I because get. the franchise Final Fantasy was wrongly taken from them back in the nineties. That I mean, hey, that. Damage was done, you know. You know, <laughs> I know. But uh, are there any final outstanding predictions either of you want to throw out there as we as we wind down? I don't know. Uh, yeah, man, I I'm excited for this direct because we don't know what the hell's going to be in it, and that's like even with these leaks, like Nintendo's next six months to 12 months is kind of a mystery. So it could be anything. And that's kind of exciting. I think you're right. I, I don't know if it's a safety thing or a, a cynic thing, but I, I do lean on seeing a lot of third party stuff and ports from like 360 gen games, maybe <laughs> <laughs> like thing. what? I don't know. Like, like prototype or like Batman Arkham or Grand Theft Auto four or something. I don't know. GTA 4? Yeah, yeah, why not? Dude. It's like at 5. You're right. Uh, GTA 4. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I think Charlie's right. It is an exciting period of time. Transformers War for Cybertron. Dude, yeah, imagine. I'd love that. The double pack. But 
yeah, we will we will see what happens. We'll see if we finally get to see all these rumored games. We'll see if uh, Wait, Nintendo delivers. What's up? Before you wrap this up, yeah, are you talking? Do you stop believing in Fire Emblem gene- genealogy? I the... think that's I think that's the next year thing. Um, okay, I, I didn't play Engage because I'm a hater and I I don't like anything that that game has going for it. Um, but I would Damn. love if we had genealogy this year because it sounds way more up my alley than the super fan service nostalgia thing that we got in january but um yeah that feels like a that feels like a next year thing i think back to switch launch year we got fire emblem echoes on the 3ds i think we'll get a new console next year and another fire emblem echoes genealogy for current switch in the uh, first half next year what's more fan service than a remake of a beloved game in the franchise is it, is it is it if it never came out here? I don't know. That's what I said earlier this morning. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think that, that'll do it. Uh, thank you both for joining today to hype up this Nintendo Direct. Uh, I'm sure there will be a lot to discuss on Twitter, and I, I, I'm sure we will all have our own thoughts out there uh, about the direct uh if anybody would like to find either of you once again where can they look for you online to uh to follow along with what you're doing you can find me on just about every social platform as chas underscore mke uh that's twitch that's twitter that's instagram that's tiktok that's just about everything that someone would want to follow me on hell yeah omar what about you? you say did you say instagram charlie yes can I plug your Instagram really quick? Please do. If you want to see someone post more food pics than Hideo Kojima, <laughs> I recommend <laughs> Charlie's Instagram. It's great. Yeah, dude, those food dumps, I, I always, every time I see it, I'm like, damn, I should order food. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seriously. It's dangerous. It, 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 is, it, is the, it is the funniest combination of, of uh, you know, people always being hungry somewhere, but yeah. also like, I'm always posting food, man. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, Omar put it best. Like, if you want to see someone post more food than anyone else, <laughs> I'm your guy. I post probably like 40-ish pictures of food a month. Probably. It's two dumps a week sometimes, right? Or is it most of the time? For Summer Game Fest, I did two dumps a week because I, I had some stuff that didn't make it in the And that was in time. L.A.? Yes. Some of that food looked real good. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. Omar, anything you want to shout out? Uh, LinkedIn, I'm a hard worker. <laughs> motivated <laughs> that's all i got i'm sorry hell yeah um yeah and you can find me twitter tiktok at chun td2 uh maybe reacting to the stream on tech raptors youtube uh we'll see if there's a panel around for that on staff uh youtube.com slash tech raptor uh or you can stay tuned here youtube.com slash joy clicks i'm sure next time there is nintendo news or uh something to talk about we will return from our predictions. But thank you for tuning in. Enjoy the show tomorrow. I hope your your dream comes true and it's not squandered by the number of RPGs they show because I know that's a, that's a touchy <laughs> thing for some Nintendo fans. But uh, thank you all. We will see you next time. <laughs>